And here we are for the 2024 Masters Week Draft. Hello, friends. I'm your host, Ben Hardy, as always, and this is Entertainment Purposes Only. Uh, got some new faces here for today, a couple familiar ones as well. To my right, you've seen him a couple times before on these episodes. Mr. Kevin Kaufman, how are you doing? Doing well. Thanks for having me back on. A little different this time, talking golf, I think, not to spoil it, but... Oh, no, I already said it was a master's draft, so you didn't spoil too much. I am pumped about that. Not pumped about my draft pick order, but uh, we'll, we'll, well overcome it. We'll get to that. It, it was random as always. And uh, also, Kevin, since the last time you guys saw him, a new father. How, how's fatherhood treating you? I was exhausting, but uh, it's everything I imagined. She's doing mm. great. Steven tried to warn me by saying the first few months are, are rough. So, I'm looking uh, after you, man. Yeah, I braced myself, but uh, the positives outweigh for lack of sleep, for sure. And right below him, his brother Stuart, uh, first time on the show. How we doing, sir? Doing, doing fine. Doing wonderful. Hello, friends. Hello, friends, indeed. And right below me, uh, my brother Stephen. Again, first time you guys have seen him as well. Stephen, how we doing? I'm doing great. I'm just very excited to be here for this on this wonderful show, this wonderful production. Uh, just really blessed. You know, it's been a great day watching Mason Short commit this morning. Didn't matter who we committed to, just watching the kid that I coached commit was awesome. You know, being here with Kevin, being the new dad, awesome. Masters week, awesome. Just super excited. So thanks for having me. Yeah, Steven's a teacher too, so this is kicking off his spring break. So he's in high spirits all around. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, so Steven mentioned it. Mason Short today committed to Georgia. This is a college football pod first and foremost, so we will uh, not really get into it. But for those of you, if you enjoy this draft and this group of people together, then a uh, good news for you because the folks on the left side of your screen here, myself and Steven, are big Georgia fans, been season ticket holders for multiple decades now. The two to the right side of your screen, the Kaufman brothers, are the same for Clemson. And I don't know if you know this or not yet, but uh, Clemson and Georgia play each other week one. So I'm sure we'll have this quartet uh, back on the show again Ooh. come August once we get, and we can maybe even add our friends Jordan and Matt to that one. So it can be a nice three versus three uh, round table discussion for that one. But, you know, we're thinking four months, five months in advance right now, but if let's go for that to just next week. Next week is the masters. Uh, all four of us, we all grew up two doors down from each other. There on Knollcrest Circle in the Spring Lake subdivision in Martinez, Georgia. Martinez, just outside of Augusta, Georgia, where obviously the tournament is played. Next week, the eyes of the world will turn to our hometown for this. And so for those of you who watched a couple weeks ago, did a draft with a different group of folks on here about the best sports days of the year. We're going to do a similar thing here today, but it's just going to be about the Masters. It's a Masters draft. The only catch is there are five categories for our five rounds. When it's your pick, you can choose whichever category you want to go into to make your pick. But by the end of the draft, we each have to have a pick from all five categories. And the categories are you'll be choosing a player, a year, a shot, a tradition, and a miscellaneous pick. So, again, you can pick those in whichever order you want. That will play into draft strategy as well, uh, depending on how the others draft, where you take your picks. But uh, shouldn't be too difficult to keep track of for us drafting. Those of us, if you're watching, just know we're keeping track of it here, and we'll each have uh, one of each at the end of this thing. So, Gentlemen, before we get started here, are there any questions? No. No. All right. So we uh, randomly decided the draft order earlier today, and it's going to be a snake draft, of course. So the order is going to be Steven, myself, then Stuart, then Kevin. Then for a second round, snake it back around, Kevin, Stuart, then Steven, and we'll keep that pattern through all five rounds. Uh, when we're done, we'll be sure to get our honorable mentions in there. But – Basically, you're going to make your pick. You're going to give your spiel on why you took the pick there. Then we'll discuss it, decide if we think it's a good pick, bad pick, whatever, and move on. So with that being said, Stephen, the tee box is yours. All right. So a lot of pressure having the first overall pick. I mean, golly, don't, don't screw this up. But, you know, I sit here and I see Stewart's hat. He's got the Masters logo. I I've got my shirt. You can't really see it, but I got the uh, the Berkman's logo right here. Um, you know, got the got the cup with the logo as well. And, and this whole show is just nothing but a master's theme show. So 
I'm actually going to start off with player. I'm going to start off with player with my first overall pick. And I'm breaking one of my rules that I set for myself. I thought, you know, we got, we're talking about shots and, and tradition and things like that, but I want to relate to our audience. So I don't want to, you know, just pick something way back when that no, none of us can really relate to. And, you know, and the black and white footage and stuff like that. But with that being said, I'm throwing that rule out the window for number one. The, the player, the only obvious choice for this answer has to be Bobby Jones, the one and the only. And let me tell you why. Because if it wasn't for Bobby Jones, we wouldn't even be having this discussion right here. There would be no Masters. There would be no Augusta National if it wasn't for Bobby Jones. So I'm, I'm starting off strong with that. I mean, the man is co-designer of the course with Alistair McKenzie, co-founder with Clifford Roberts. I mean, just amazing. And according to Wikipedia, he was a super great player in his own right. 13 majors, which some of those were the uh, the amateur majors that he won. But You need a Wikipedia I mean, to tell you that? You know, hey, I, I, I wanted to be clear. But let me tell you, on that point, the fact that the Augusta National and the Masters still has amateurs play today in the tournament is a nod to Bobby Jones. And just to end this, I'm, I'm going to do something that I don't think has been done on this show before, but I'm going to take it to the next level. I got a prop. I haven't seen a prop on this show yet. Let me tell you something. This right here, this is an official print from the Augusta, uh, Augusta National. You can only get it in their stores. Look who is in the middle of that picture right there. That ain't Tiger Woods. That ain't Jack Nicklaus. Look, well, we're not tipping picks here. That's Bobby Jones right there. All right. And his quote, this is perfect. This land was just laying here the whole time, just waiting for a golf course to be put on it, baby. Like, it's all about Bobby Jones when we're talking about the Augusta Nationals. So that's my number one overall pick for the show. It's a good pick. It's a good pick. Now, there could be a question. You chose to take him as a player. Could have gone in as a miscellaneous, as, you know, founder, co-creator, all that. But you chose him as a player. He had to be on the board somewhere in this draft. So I'm glad we're not going to make it through this thing and not having him on there. Do I think you could have gotten him later? Maybe so. Maybe so. But you had your guy. You targeted your prospect for your pick, and you made the pick. I I don't hate it. Poor yeah, record as a player. Poor record as a player. Ooh. And the Masters. What did Wikipedia say about that? What Wikipedia said was that, again, we ain't even having this discussion if it ain't for Bobby Jones. So hang your hat on that. That was fair. Spoken like a politician. All right, boys, y'all got anything to add to that one before we move on? No, I think that's a solid number one overall pick. He's been stewing on that for a while, I guess. All right. Yep. So I'm up second, my turn. I think that in my mind, there were two clear number one worthy picks. I was hoping Stephen would take one of them to make my job easier. Bobby Jones was not one of my clear number one picks. But the thing is, my two clear number one picks are probably the two deepest categories. So it's like you could get away with not having it, still get a good pick in it later. But I'm not overthinking it. I'm taking tradition, the green jacket ceremony in Butler Cabin for my tradition. It's every year, it's Jim Nance, now Fred Ridley, the chairman, low amateur, last year's champion, this year's champion. They do the interviews, and then the moment everybody's been waiting for all week, the four, the previous champion stands up, slips the coat, the jacket, onto the champion, and then it's pretty much the same re one of two reactions every time. It's a big breathe in and sigh like ah, from the winner, or they're just fighting back tears. And it's always one of those two things. You know, it's – you think of the Masters, you think of the Green Jacket. It is what it is. That's my pick, tradition, Green Jacket ceremony, Butler Cabin. I mean, I think we probably all had the Green Jacket on our list at some point. You can't talk about the Masters and not include the Green Jacket. So, I mean, you definitely can't go wrong with that. It's probably the most iconic uniform 
potentially, or I don't know, article of clothing and sports. So yeah, of course. Trophy, you could say. Yeah, you could. Yeah. Yep. As a gentleman who has seen you have some very awkward handshakes in your time, I too think well, that that's very fitting for, pick for you. The handshakes do get awkward oftentimes. The Jordan <laughs> speak Danny Will at one is all time. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I it's a can't miss first round pick. Like, mm-hmm. you know, when you're taking this pick in the first round, this pick's going into the Hall of Fame. Might not be Tom Brady, but, you know, it's at least going to be like a Peyton Manning. Can't miss prospect. I couldn't let it pass me up. That was my pick. And Stuart, you're on the tee. Thank you. Um, I am going to go with a shot, I believe. I think as an Augustan, an Augusta native, that I'm going to have to pick a shot that Larry Mize hit in 1987 to win the Green Jacket. Uh, went to a playoff, defeated Seve Ballesteros, and then Greg Norman with a miraculous chip in that I'm uh, hoping we've all seen him hit. We've seen that shot on number 11 and to win the green jacket. So that is my pick. Good Larry pick. Mize, 1987, yeah. chip in for the win. Let me, let me tell you why that's a great pick, because when you said that, I think all of us like look down at whatever list we have or whatever. And I think we probably all scratched that off our list because yeah. that, that was an amazing shot. So that was a great choice. I had that one as number one also. That's why it's my one. Mm-hmm. Feel good. Yeah. Feel good. There are probably two shots in contention for best shot. And this is the best one. So, I mean, worthy of a first rounder, no doubt. This is a good pick. Kevin's not even going to mention it. He's just gearing up for his next two picks coming up here. He's excited. I got two. It's, I got a, I'm, I'm shocked that the first one got to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and Go that's and a take player. It. Shout out to Steven for taking the most important figure in Masters. But if we're talking best players, there's only one answer, and that's Jack Nicholas. The most, most green jackets with six. Nobody's going to catch that. Um, so not overthinking that. Pumped that this this one fell to me at four. Did not think it would. Jack Nicholas as my first round pick. I just want to say, in my defense, I was told that it wasn't best player. It was just player in general. So I just went with the option, you know, that that literally had his fingerprints all over the course. But yes, Jack Nicholas is wonderful. The most green jackets in history. Obviously, a great player for sure. Yeah, six wins. I mean, the most of all time, probably going to stay that way for a while with the way it's looking. He sort of dodged the Tiger Woods chase after him there. Uh, Yeah, I mean, if we're drafting players as a category, getting the guys with most wins at number four, it's a good pick. Yep, and then I know Steven has something against black and white shots, clips, things, but there's one arguably the most epic shot in golf history was the shot heard around the world. I think it was in 1935. That was baseball. Um, But, yeah, so Gene Saracen, double eagle on 15 to take him from three back to tie um, and ultimately went on to win it. I mean, the the title of the the shot says it all, the shot heard around the world. So that's my second-round pick uh, in the shot category. All right. I mean, mean, we know Stephen hates it, but – no, 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 no. I don't I don't hate it. I'm just trying I'm trying to win this thing, right? So I'm just trying to relate to the audience here. So for again, forget about the Bobby Jones part. That was my one exception to the rule. But yes, the shot heard around the world. Yes, Wikipedia says it was 1935. Absolutely trusted. Wonderful. Thank you. Wish thank we could have seen it live. <laughs> yeah, you were only born a few years later, so you just missed it. I know. Uh, all right, back to Stuart. I am going to go, I think this is kind of a, I'm going to go year. And I'm not so sure I'm going to go with the first year that everybody thought would be the first year. But I'm going to go with 2011 Masters Tournament. Oh, okay. Your, a young Rory McIlroy comes into the fourth round with the lead, gets on the 10, hooks it into the trees, has an shoots an 80. He's out. Eight players tied for the lead in the fourth round. 
And Charles Schwartzel has to birdie the last four to win. But we all sat together watching that Masters and all the great shots going back and forth there in that back nine. And I think we all remember it. And so I want to go. 2011, the best year, at least in our lifetimes. But I think of all time. Ooh. Yes. What? Most entertaining. It was certainly the most entertaining. Yeah. It was, and I think we were all also thinking at the same time, is this day really going to end with Charles Schwartzel winning this thing out of all the other names involved there? Uh, he earned it, like you said, birdie 15 through 18 on Sunday. I mean, you tip your cap to the guy. Uh, I've actually, I'll let the others speak on this because I've got another sort of cool story I'm going to share about that Sunday later on as we get into the draft. But, uh, yeah, Stephen, Kevin, what y'all think? Well, I remember that one. I was – Clemson was playing at Duke in baseball, and I was not on the travel team. So I was on the boat listening to that, and it was before streaming. So I remember that comeback, and we quickly U-turned back to the house to, to watch those last few holes. But that's that's my memory of it. So I, I remember that was – so for those of you that don't know, Stuart and I were roommates in college. And I remember – I was in our – well, we were in the apartment at that time. Um, but I remember watching Rory hit that tee shot on the back nine. And it was one of those things where like the announcers really don't know what to say because it was such a bad shot, you know, and they don't want to say anything like too negative, but everybody was kind of like, oh my gosh, like this is Roy McElroy, but is the pressure really going to start getting to him? And, and I just remember that. And I, and, but I will say this, I hate the fact that Charles Schwartzel has a green jacket and not mm -hmm. Roy McElroy. I, because to Ben's point, the green jacket is such a big deal. I hate it when people like Schwartzel or, Danny Willett or Trevor, Trevor Emmelman. Are you kidding me? These people have green jackets. That just irks me. And I, I can't stand that. So that's, that's part my of issue all, with the pick. Part of that is also the beauty of it, though. Like 40 years from now, we're going to be seeing uh, pictures of them all together at a certain event that I won't mention because it's probably going to get drafted later. are going to be like, who is that? Oh, that's Charles Schwartzel. Is it mm -hmm. Danny Will? Oh, yeah, I remember that. And, you know, it's the only tournament where they go back every single year. And, you know, it's a, you all obviously need the heavy hitters, but it's also cool to have those randos in there just sprinkled throughout. All right. It's my turn. I can't believe this is getting to me. Steven, you say you're trying to relate to the audience with your picks. <clears throat> this shot I'm going to take, it's probably not – the best shot ever hit it might be the most viewed the most iconic shot ever hit and by now you know what i'm saying 2005 tiger goes long on 16 he's in the rough doesn't have a shot he's you know got to just sort of trickle it up the hill and let it trickle on back down got to stop it right at the apex and it does, and it's rolling. It's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. It's going to go. Oh, it stops just short. Oh, Nike commercial on the ball. One more revolution after it stops. Goes in. Crowd's going nuts. Vern Lundquist, in your life, have you ever seen anything like that? Tigers chip in on 16 on Sunday, 2005. I think – might end up getting me a lot of votes taking this pick because everybody's familiar with it. Everybody's seen it. And I mean, he has one fewer green jacket if that shot doesn't trickle in one more revolution. So imagine yeah, if that I mean, happens in the social media era. Like that was just woo. the internet would have broken. Like oh the memes. Crazy. Well, even even without it being in that era, it's people call That's it the them. greatest Nike commercial ever. And Nike didn't even have to pay for it. Like it was, you know, the best advertising they could have possibly had. So mm -hmm. it was, yeah, just everybody thinks of that shot for sure. So that's a great pick. Thank you. Thank you. A fun fact about that year, Frank and I went to the tournament on Sunday that year. Stood mm -hmm. on the back of 16, front row. Watched 10 groups come through. And left before that? Frank makes us leave before the leaders <laughs> get to the ninth hole so we can get the traffic. We didn't get to see it. Yep. Always got to be that traffic. Yeah. So you said that was that was oh, 2005. Is that what you said? Yeah. 
Yeah, so my memory is that yeah. was the first year I worked at the tournament. So I was a sophomore in high school, and I was I was one of the trash boys. I had the yellow jumpsuit. I had everything. Um, so yeah, that, so I of course I didn't see the shot because I'm emptying trash cans and doing all that sort of stuff. But you know, I'm keeping up with it because wasn't him Tiger and Demarco like wasn't it Chris Demarco? They yes. were having a really close match, and then that's yeah Tiger over the edge or something. So yeah, I mean he was dead in the water without that, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can't overcome that as a competitor when Tiger gets that going for him. Un yeah. Unbeatable. Yeah. I mean, that was still had to go to a playoff, and he did that on yeah. 16. I mean, DeMar uh, I wonder how many hours of sleep Chris DeMarco has lost thinking of that shot. Steven's pumped because he would not want DeMarco having a green jacket. So there you go, Steven. Yes, I know. Yep. <laughs> yep. All right, Steven, you got two picks. Man, this is this is exciting. Um so kind of like what everybody said, like, I can't believe this is coming to me, which which is good because it all shows that we find like different things important and different things interesting. But I'm going to go with the year. I'm going to pick a year that is very unique and there's never been another year like it ever in the history of the tournament. And there will never be another year like it in the future. And that, my friends, is the 2020 Fall Masters. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. I was thinking about this last night, and you know, it took me forever to even remember who won that tournament. Like, I was like, I can't even remember who Dustin won. Johnson. Yeah. yeah, I remembered it after a while, but this is my point. Yeah. It wasn't about the actual golf that year, what made that tournament great. Like, it was just the event itself. Because, first of all, everybody was upset because you didn't think we were even going to have a Masters that year, right? And then when they announced that they're going to do it in the fall, People are super excited. Well, they're surprised. And then it kind of sets in like, whoa, this is truly going to be a once in a lifetime event. Like you're never going to see another Masters like this. I mean, our, our host of the show has a poster on the wall in his house that's of the the fall uh, foliage of the Masters because you just don't see that. There was football balls that came out. There was, uh, I was told, football helmets that have the Masters logo on it. I mean, for crying out loud, this is a college football show. The two worlds collide because what got to be held at the Masters that year? College game day was held at the Masters. How cool is that? It's amazing. It was truly unique. Once in a lifetime. There it is. There's the poster. Never going to see anything like it. And check this out. I might need the, uh, the host to help me share something here. But I'd like to... If we can show you something special, let's see here. I must say, I think I've blocked 2020 from my memory. No. Ben, can you, you share my screen? screen? Here we go. Here we go. Boys, oh. let me tell you something. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, this is Ben. And, and my dad, this is Dollar Bill, who's now Grand Dollar. This man made national news because this is the 2020 Masters. He's a gallery guard, and he was a gallery guard with no gallery. This right here, this is from the, let me see if I can figure out what newspaper this is from. This is from the Iola Register. Who in the heck knows where Iola is? But let me tell you, it's somewhere in America, and that is our dad on national newspapers because that's how weird that Masters was and how unique it was. I mean, it was just truly unique and one of a kind. So got to be the 2020 Masters. Nothing ever like it again. Look at him wearing a mask with no one around. What a lid. Just said, wow. Shots fired. <laughs> but, yeah, so, Stephen, do you remember what he actually spent most of his time that week doing? Probably. Oh, yeah. Uh, this, is, this is why I should have remembered who won the tournament. Yes. Of Our course. dad made, made uh, quite an acquaintance with uh, Paulina. Paulina Gretzky. Paulina Gretzky. Right? Yeah. Uh, is she Johnson now? I mean, have they actually gotten married? They're married. I don't know if she's changed the last name, but they are. He's not giving up that last name. Yeah, yeah. That's that's like our dad's claim to fame that he got to like spend the week with her. So yeah. How did Peggy feel about that? You know, I think she, uh, I think she realized that for him it was it was kind of a big deal. So she was supporting, <laughs> I guess, as much as possible. So. So yeah, so what, that's. What do think? There was no gallery to guard, so she 
kept coming up to him asking questions on the first day. Then she would go find him the rest of the days to ask more questions. And, you know, that's what he did that week. I will say that that year was not even on my radar, but you, you pitched it well. And I, I can definitely see why it would be the top of your list. That's both of his picks so far. Very true. Yes. <laughs> hey, I'm thinking outside the box here. So you can't you can't say that, like, I don't have some unique, interesting stuff going on. If you're not first, yeah. you're last. You might do well with the voters who watch the episode, but when I just post it on social and people vote by the picks listed out, you won't get any of those votes. That's my prediction. Well, I guess we'll just have to have to wait and see. I don't know. Maybe people will be like, this guy's so crazy. We have to see what he had to say. Like, where did he <laughs> True. From? Maybe it'll up the viewership. All yeah. right. As we move into round three, Stephen, you're up again. This is hard because I know I don't get eight more picks. Or I don't get to pick again before eight picks. And I got two I'm going back and forth between. But I'm going to go with tradition. My master's tradition is what's unique about the masters as far as the major tournaments are concerned. And that is that the masters is played at the same course every year, every tournament. It doesn't rotate. It's always at Augusta National. And the reason that's so special is because Augusta National is so special. I mean, it, it's like one of the most iconic places on earth. And, and you know, you could go, you talk about Magnolia Lane, or you talk about Founder Circle, or you talk about Amen Corner. Um, these places that even the casual golf fans, I feel, know about. Because you see it every year. You hear about it every year. And it's just, it's so cool. I mean, um, and then new stuff like Augusta National is on the cutting edge of everything. So while you have those old traditional places, you have Berkman's place, which is also widely considered to be like the most exclusive, the best VIP hospitality uh, hangout in the entire sports world. Like it's amazing. Um, I don't know because Augusta National is so special. Like you can't, when you think of masters, you have to think of the course, you can't separate them. They, they're truly joined together. Um, and, but that is a tradition because it's the only major that's played at the same place every year. So I think that's a that's a huge deal. It is. The players all say, you know, whether they're listening to music or radio or podcast, whatever, in the car, once they make that turn into Magnolia Lane, when they get there for the first time that year, they shut the music off and they're they're just taking it all in. That's it's their favorite drive of the year for sure. Uh, yeah, that, all the other majors – at a different course every year. Like you said, this is the one steady, the one constant as far as the majors go. Yeah. Fair pick. All right. My turn again. Let's see. I still need a year, a player and a miscellaneous. Hmm. I'm going to take a year. And I'm going to – this might be a reach. I might could have gotten this in the last round. But sort of like Stewart's with 2011, where it's like when you actually think back on it and how awesome it was, you remember. I'm going to take the year after that, 2012. Bubba Watson wins his first green jacket, beats Louis Oosthuizen in the playoff. It ended up going to two holes. And – I'm going to pull a Chris Fowler here. He would do 100, but I'm not that rich. So 50 bucks to anyone who off the top of their head, name who was leading the Masters going into Sunday in 2012. Can anybody do it? Brant Snedeker. I feel like I I came across Stephen, you won't know it. I don't remember. Okay, yeah. It's Peter Hansen was leading that tournament. I knew going it. In, no, you didn't. Oh, going wait, into yeah. Sunday. And I didn't remember that until I was doing Greece, but it was Peter Hansen and Phil Mickelson were the final pairing. And then Louis Oosthuizen and Bubba Watson were right behind them. And they were just going at it all day. Remember, Louis Oosthuizen makes an albatross on number two that day. So he goes from like three back to in the lead on number two, just like that. It was an amazing shot. He's just draining putts from everywhere on the front nine, borderline running away with the thing. Bubba just stays the course, keeps on playing, keeps on playing, makes a couple big putts himself on the back. They go to the playoff. They both par 18. 
Then they go to 10, and let's just say something that happened there might show up later on in this draft. Who knows? But an unbelievable moment. Bubba Watson wins it. It was dramatic. There were tears. It was all of Bubba's friends on there hugging him on the 10th green when he won the thing. It That Sunday in particular, uh, just a fantastic day of Masters golf. I, uh, I got no argument because that was number two on my list. So if I didn't get the 2020 Masters, I was going 2012 myself. So great pick. Thank you. Boys, anything? We are taking some kind of non uh, kind of out there years. Like uh, these are not was, yeah. some of the top uh, ones most people would think, but it shows. That was on know, my honorable mentions for shots, but was not on my list for you. Mm. Yeah, I agree. That shot, though, if you go stand in those trees and look and see how somebody could hit that, yeah. is unreal. Yeah. Unreal. Well, don't forget, boys, I still haven't picked my shot yet, so you may see, uh, mm-hmm. may hear a little bit more about that coming up. We'll see. I don't know yet. <laughs> All right, Stuart, you're up. I think I'm going to have to take the tradition, uh, the champion's dinner. I think yep. uh, that that getting all those champions together, seeing that picture with them all sitting around the table. I guess we have just recently learned that the champion gets to pay for dinner. Who knew that? That's that adds a neat little wrinkle into it. I didn't know that. Oh yes, yes. Champions got to pay for it, so you wow. might get a little. Maybe if you got a little bad bad blood, or maybe if he beat, maybe if champion beats you, and you're adding a little. Extra glass of wine or something on top of it to, to bump the bill up, but get the pick. They, they kind of, I, I think it's neat to see their, what they pick to eat and how it's coming from other people's countries now. And yeah, whenever it's a foreigner, it's always a very, uh, whatever country they're from has that flair to the menu. John Rom, no exception this year. <laughs> Tell you one exception though is Tiger Woods. Didn't he pick cheeseburgers that first year after he won? Yeah, what's more American than that? Yeah. I'm saying quesadillas, I believe. Also, he had chicken quesadillas on there. Milkshake. Yeah. I I just hope a poor amateur never wins again if they have to pay for all that. <laughs> mm. Good point. I didn't I didn't know that. I thought the club put it on for him. So it did it like Stuart sort of said it. Didn't it just come out recently that they actually yes. paid for it? I yeah, so. I've never right. heard that before like a month ago. Wow. Yeah. Keep on learning something new about this stuff. But no, that's but a yeah, good Stuart, That was the only reason that I gave consideration to not taking the green jacket ceremony first overall was wanting this pick later on. So the fact that you're getting it in round three, that's, that's pretty that's strong. Good. It's pretty strong. All right, Kevin, you're up. Yeah, that was... That was going to be my pick, so nice one there. Um, it looks like what years are all taken except for me, so I should save that. Um, I'll stick with tradition because I think there's a pretty big drop off after this one as well. And for me, it's the the par three contest on oh, yeah. the Wednesday before. I mean, let's talk about things unique to to the Masters, right? Its own own course. You have a lot of cool memories with like the the childs or the children of. Of players caddying you have some not so fortunate memories like tony finau doing whatever he did to his ankle after acing one talk about a swing of emotions and then and then somehow would he come in like top 10 like at, at yeah as well? it was just insane i know this because robbie and i had a entertainment purposes only bet of course around uh who would it was like a reverse bet where they would be like i think he took tony finau because we thought he was gonna miss and i was like the goal was for him to draft somebody who was not going to make the cut Otherwise, the other person had to pay, and he was on the list. Were you involved in that, Ben? I was. I think you were like. I think it was my idea. Now. Yeah. Yeah, we were trying to get cheeky with it because he may withdraw. Anyways. Yeah. So that was one. You also have the the uh, intricacies that like no par three winner has ever won the tournament. So if you're close at the end, do you immediately like do you want a bogey number nine so you don't fall on that list, or do you think you can break the trend? That's when That's you just let your stuff. kid or wife putt for you, so you get disqualified. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So that was what I have for my tradition. Yeah, it's a great one. Definitely deserve to be drafted. Fun fact, I'm actually going on Wednesday this year, and it's my first time ever going on a Wednesday. So I'll get my first par three tournament experience. So looking forward to that. Hopefully get to see some uh, holes in one. Yep. 
It was on my list too. I mean, classic. It's, it is such a cool and unique event. And going back to your last episode or your, your two episodes ago, when y'all were talking about your best sports days, um, I agree with whichever one of your guests said that they, they thought about taking the par three over master Sunday. Well, Just thank you. Cause that was me. Okay. It was a great point because it, it does. It like sets the tone. You get so excited and you're happy on Wednesday because you can enjoy that event. And then, you know, you just have the next great four days. Like it just really, it's so cool. Um, and you get to see brand new players and Jack Nicholas and Gary player and those guys too. Like everybody plays together. It is a really cool mm -hmm. event. Yes. Yes. All right. On to the fourth round, Kevin. All right, I know, I know the, the smart thing to do here is hold off my year and go miscellaneous here, but I feel very confident nobody's taking my miscellaneous and I think it'd be a good end to the show. So I'm going to go with year. And I mean, I'm shocked this hasn't been drafted before, but it's probably a little chalkier than what you guys went with. And that was 2019 for me, Tiger Woods, the, the completion of the Tiger Woods arc as it pertains to the masters, at least are also I'm partial to that because I was at Saturday of that tournament and at least as far as I've seen, there is nothing like Tiger in contention in Augusta. Like the, the crowd, the roars, the entourage, there's nothing that compares at this tournament. Um, and that was one where you really didn't know if you'd ever see it again, right? Like, you know, the saying where you don't know you're in the good old days until they're behind you or however it goes. Um, that was one where like, you're like, man, Tiger Woods, the glory days. And it was so far removed to see that again and him to win it again was just incredible. Yeah, the magnitude of that one was lost on no one, like you said, because we thought we were never going to see that again. Mm -hmm. You saw all the clips from 97, 01, 02, 05, and then to just get that, you know, for that one more weekend was special for everybody. That Sunday, when he was back a couple for most of the day, and then Brooks Kepkin, and someone else in the group before him went in the water on 12, then Francesco Molinari went in the water on 12, and then Tiger just steps up and sticks it right in the middle of the green, just straight face the whole time. Oh, and then from there on, it was a wrap. Just um, his shot on 16, almost yep. a hole in one, kept showing the ball trickling down towards the cup and going back and forth between Tiger's face watching it and the ball. Well, behind Tiger's just Michael Phelps just sitting there leaning over, yes. egging it on. Just uh, everything about it, fantastic cool stuff. Chills. It was Number one on my year, only reason I didn't take it earlier was because I already have a Tiger moment on my draft. But, yeah, I mean, it had to be drafted 2019. Yep. And how about them teeing off early? Basically, we woke up and, and they were teeing off. We we turned on CBS and they were going off. Didn't yeah, they were playing in threesomes, going off both nines because the there's going to be a bad storm late in the afternoon that day. You're right. Yep. I just – we're talking golf and, and I'm thinking, just sitting here thinking like, has there been an athlete that anybody else can think of that has, I guess, recovered as far as public perception goes, like somebody who had fallen as low as he did and then kind of recovered and gotten popular again as Tiger Woods. Like, I, I don't know if there's another one like him because I mean, we're talking about, you know, the course going crazy. I can remember standing there at the course one year and we heard, I don't remember what hole I was on, but we heard a roar from across the course and somebody behind me was like, I bet that was a tiger roar. And then somebody else behind me was like, yeah, maybe he hit it in the water. Mm. Like that was when he was at his, when everyone hated him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. And but then now in 2019, like you're getting the roars because people are pulling for him again. And then now mm -hmm. with this whole LIV thing and Tiger's on the good side, it seems, you know, in most people's mind, like he's totally recovered. And I'm, I don't know, like I just I can't think of like a better somebody who's come back from as much as he did to be like loved again as, as Tiger, which is kind of kind of like neat. Michael Vick in Philadelphia. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's another good one. But I'll tell you, that's why Tiger would never go to live. Don't know that he would have anyway, but to spend like over a decade having to repair your image and finally get it back to where like everybody's pretty much on your side again. Imagine if he just in the snap of a finger took $750 million, like, yeah, I'm going to play for the Saudis. I'm out. <laughs> yep. Yeah. What a move that would have been. Ben, can you, what, what, weren't we having this talk the other day? What, who was some, oh, oh. We were saying this was probably like the other year when we were at the beach, even, but we were talking about how weird it was that someone like our dad 
was more of a Tiger fan now than a Phil fan. Like how because of Liv, that? yeah, that's what I'm saying. But like ten years ago, that would have been you'd never thought that that would have ever been issued as as anything. I got and news for you. Said, that that's crazy. That 2019 Sunday, I was watching in our den at our home with Dad. I think I was watching with the only man in America pulling against Tiger Woods that day. Even in 2019, he was still against Tiger. He anyone but. And no matter how much sense I tried to talk into the man, but yeah, I feel like I feel like now he'd be pulling for Tiger to win. Well, I don't know because he, he loves Jack. He wouldn't want Tiger to tie Jack. But. That's very true. Yeah, if it yeah. wasn't, yeah, yeah, he don't want him to touch six. But yeah, well, we'll have to ask him. He uh, texted me before we started. He can't wait to watch. So uh, Jack's a great player. So great, you have great taste, Della Bill. Jack that's, is a great player. That's true. At uh, Kevin's pick from earlier, just trying to win another vote there. Um, all right, Stuart, you're up. I got player and miscellaneous to pick, and I'm going to have to go player. And can't be Tiger now. We've had too much Tiger talk. So we're going Arnold Palmer, Arnie's Army, a mem proud member of Arnie's Army. Uh, five times, right? Or three. He's won three green jackets. Four. Four. Four yeah. green jackets. Mm -hmm. um, what I think mo most people don't quite realize is one could argue that the Masters is now what it is because of Arnold Palmer. Arnold Palmer and CBS kind of came together there at the same time when he was winning Masters. And I think that's a good, strong pick. I'm a proud member of Arnie's Army, and I have the button somewhere. But uh, hmm. what really so, tied this together is if you took a sip out of a glass with an Arnold Palmer. I, in it. I, I was I was banned from that. <laughs> okay. I don't know what that means, but okay. <laughs> yeah. If you had been prepared, you'd have that ready. Uh, this is a very very professional. Uh, Stu, baby. <laughs> all business. All oh, business on this one. You might think of a John Daly. <laughs> yeah. yeah I it, Arnold, Arnold Palmer's just sweet. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> like, why are you banned from that? <laughs> well, we don't have, well, we have to go to the bathroom. To die now around. I'm questioning how much you really know about Arnold Palmer. I, he didn't I, know how many masters he won, and now he doesn't know the drink. Uh, yep, that's true. Still a good pick. Still going to still was a good pick. give me favors with, with his army. Yep. Yeah. Look, I'll put it this way: if he didn't get picked there, he was going to get picked in the next pick of the draft. So, well done. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's on me. I need player or miscellaneous. Hmm. I'll go player, just so we'll all sort of take our miscellaneous in a row at the end. Give me. Again, it would be Tiger, but I've already got a Tiger pick. So give me Phil. Give me the lefty. You know, you got Jack with six, Tiger with five, who we've discussed, Arnie with four. Then after that, there's a handful of guys with three. Phil's one of them. 04, 06, 2010. 2004 was in consideration for my year. I think we all remember that. Remember, that was a year before 2005 when Tiger beat out Chris DeMarco. It gets forgotten because it ended up that uh, Phil ended up beating out Ernie Els with his last putt to win. But his playing partner that day in the final group was also Chris DeMarco. Uh, you know, just a fun fact there. But Chris DeMarco doing him a huge solid on 18. Phil needed a birdie to win. A par would have gone to a playoff with Ernie Els. DeMarco hits his approach shot just a few feet behind where Phil's is. He gets to see DeMarco hit his, run behind him, get the perfect read on the putt, steps up, hits his, doesn't look like it's going in, lips in, Phil does the jump, iconic. He was, people forget at the time, it was a big deal of how good of a golfer Phil Mickelson was who had never won a major. Yep. It, like that was the monkey on his back. It was, you know, like Steve Young with Super Bowls. It's just when is he ever going to win a major? He had the Tiger factor blocking him all the time. When is he ever going to do it? Goes to Augusta, finally gets it done in dramatic fashion. It's an all-time putt, an all-time jump, an all-time moment. Ends up winning two more. Phil Mickelson for my player. 
Yeah, I mean, that was a that was an exciting uh, win. I mean, because like you said, it was his first one and everybody was just pulling for him so hard because um, he hadn't won. I can I can remember, I think it was Rick Riley. Wasn't he the writer for Sports Illustrated or, yeah. or something like that? But he, he wrote a book, a golf book, and it was funny. It had a bunch of funny things in there. But even in that book, he referred to they were ranking who were the best golfers to not win a major not including Phil Mickelson because he was like the clear and above number one. Like you had to have your own separate discussion because it was obviously Phil. So forget him. Like who else hasn't won a major? Um, Cause he was that good and just finally closed the door. And he always talked about how much he loved the masters too. So for him to, to win the masters was, was really neat. Everybody was pumped when he won. Still does talk about that. As he should masters champion. It means something. It's the greatest golf tournament in the world. Hands down, forget the U.S. Open. That's right. It's I that said. Gary Player. <laughs> yeah. he, I, I had to scratch Gary Player off my player list. Oh, he's yeah. After sure. the quote. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, but did y'all see the clip like this week of Phil Mickelson talking about the Masters? They were at some live press conference, and he just goes into this like five-minute answer about how – the strategy behind every shot and how it's just a completely different because they had like three people there. And one of the other ones was Bubba. You were talking with about how him and Bubba have to approach the whole thing completely different than any right-hander based off of, if they go into this bunker, the shot coming up, the green's going to run toward or away based on their left. ear. It's just classic Phil. I hope that, you know, PGA and live can finally like come together again and everyone can be back in the good graces. Cause like I saw somebody say, if he's ever allowed to do it at this point, if everyone stops hating him, Phil Mickelson would go down as the greatest color commentator all time. I don't care what's happened the last couple of years. He's very likable still. And yeah, he's quite the character. I mean, yeah. I've, I've heard stories of um, back when I had Twitter, I haven't had Twitter in like four years now, but I did a long time ago. And there were, there were some other golfers talking about how like Phil will show up to the driving range or other stuff. And he's just got like hundred dollar bills hanging out of his pockets and things like that. Just always looking to like make bets on the side or, or showing off his calf muscles, always talking about the calves and things like that. Like, so he does have some, some things that are really funny about him that, um, you know, that people seem to like being around him. So. And has there been any word Justin Thomas just fired bones this week is bones going to caddy for Phil this week who also needs a caddy. Because that would be awesome. That He's would not, be cool, but I know Phil, Phil has already hired a new caddy. Okay. Greatest okay. green reader out there. That's what he really? said. Okay. <laughs> Phil, well, not known Phil said it, of, I trust him. Well, yeah. Phil, not known for a lot of hyperbole, but. Uh, no, never, never, never. Yes. All right, Stephen, you got two picks, and they are your last two picks. All right, so I guess it doesn't matter what, what order I do them in, then. Um, do miscellaneous last, so all of our last round can be miscellaneous. Okay. All right. Fair enough. All right. For best shot, um, I've got two. I, I mentioned earlier that when we were talking about that 2012 Masters and Bubba shot out of the pine straw, like that, that was an incredible shot, but I'm not going to go with that one. Um, since I took Bobby Jones earlier, didn't say anything about Jack. Now I'm going to go, go with Jack Nicholas. Hmm. His putt, in 1986 on 17, I think that was the one that actually put him in the lead. I'm not sure, but either way, I mean, it was, it was a big putt, you know, he's holding the putter up, but what was so cool about that was the call, the Vern Lundquist call. Yes, sir. When that ball rolls in the hole, like you see that constantly replayed. Um, and then when he won that tournament in 1986, not only was it his sixth green jacket, making him the the person, the golfer who's won the most green jackets, that also made him the oldest player to ever win a green jacket. Um, so, you know, all that, I, I can just tie in with that shot. Like, you, you just think, yeah, it was a putt on 17, but it was a Sunday putt on 17, uh, and it put him in the lead, and he was, like, way down. Uh, he, had, he had to play uh, amazing – uh, second nine that Sunday to even get to that point and then rolled that in the call with Vern Stewart mentioned CBS earlier. So, you know, like all that kind of goes in together. So I'm going to go with Jack's putt on Sunday on 17, the famous yes, sir, putt um, as, as my uh, shot for, for this draft. What do y'all think? It's a certain group of people out there who I think it's silly, but they'll say the masters doesn't start until the back nine on Sunday. 
that was 1986. It starts there. Rory, because yeah, like you said, Jack was way down, and then he just caught fire. Yeah. I think he shot like a 30 on the back, wasn't it? Something crazy like that. It was something wild, whatever it was. Because didn't, didn't he, he birdie, he like had a bunch of birdies, and then I think he eagled, maybe he eagled 15 or something yeah. like that. Um, but anyway, like I said, the, the putt is just one I remember because that's the one they keep replaying. So, um, mm-hmm. but yeah. All and right. his son was on the bag, right? Reading the putt? Was I'm he at that sure. point? I don't know. No, he was. He was. I think he was. His son, just, Jackie just was feeling, feeling your pick, Stephen. Great moment. Yeah. There you go. Thank, thank you for uh, adding to it. You know, I, I feel like I've tried to help you guys out some, so I, I appreciate it. So, yeah, nice. All right. All right. Now, a round of miscellaneous for the boys. All right, let me tell y'all something. Y'all thought I went off the wall with Bobby Jones, which was a great pick. It wasn't really off the wall. I mean, it was amazing. Let me tell y'all about this miscellaneous. The Masters is truly a timeless event. They have a policy that you cannot take your cell phone into the course. As far as I know, they're like the only tournament to do that. They still have manual scoreboards, which, oh my gosh, you're out there and you don't have your phone, so you can't look up like who's in the lead. There's not just these digital scoreboards that just pop numbers up just out of nowhere. Like you literally see the the thing come down. There's a gap. Everybody's paying attention. They can't wait just to see what number is going to go up. So you have no phones. You have um, the manual scoreboards. You have uh, the concession stand prices. People talk about that all the time, like how cheap it is to buy uh, concessions and stuff at the course. And so what I mean by it being a timeless event is – we can go out to the Masters this year in 2024, and it would literally almost be the exact thing as if we were there in 1974 or 1964. It's going to be the exact same vibe. And for a lot of things, you might say, well, that would be a bad thing because you want things to modernize and you want things to get better, but not for the Masters. That's what makes it perfect and, and wonderful. And for those people watching that don't know, like I drive people around during the week. Um, People freak out the morning when I drop them off at the course and they realize they have to leave their cell phones with me, but it never fails. When I pick them up in the afternoon after a day on the course, it never fails. One of the first things out of their mouth is that was one of the best days I've ever had in my life. I can't tell you how much I enjoyed not having my phone with me. Like they were forced to unplug and they loved it. It was amazing. Um, So yeah, for those reasons, it's timeless. Like you can walk out on that course and it's just going to be the same experience every year for the most part, but that's what makes it super, super cool and super special. So that's my miscellaneous. I think you, you yeah. bucketed like three of my miscellaneous under that yeah, one umbrella. So you named like right my here. entire miscellaneous list on your pick. It was a great, great pick then. Wait for me to umbrella, put an umbrella. Well, that's the all. definition of miscellaneous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but okay. So we'll, I mean, what do you want when I put the uh, all out? Just timelessness? Timelessness. But do you want to mention cell phones or the scoreboard? Just I mean that all it's all rolled in together. Okay. Well, I'll tell you, I'm up now. I'm gonna again you mentioned it, but I'm just gonna take the concessions as my miscellaneous pick. Um, you know. It has to be on the board. Who better to take it than the big boy? It, <laughs> the sandwich selection, you know, it's not – if you've never been, you're going to look at that sandwich board and be like, oh, I can make any of these at home. Well, no, you can't. It's not the same. The brandless drinks, you got uh, domestic beer, domestic light beer, uh, blue sports drink, uh, the <laughs> – <laughs> the lemon hot lime ice cream. cream sandwich, the what'd you say? Lemon lime ice cream. cream. Right, right. Yeah. The, hey, we don't we don't say brand names there. Just okay. and then the prices, it's no more than I think three dollars for a sandwich, and that's on the high end. You can get plenty for like a dollar fifty two bucks. Same for all the non-alcoholic drinks. You know, you get a water, a tea, a blue sports drink. It's just a couple of bucks. It's Really, the best part about it, too, is the layout of it. 
you got all the aisles, all the lines. You just walk through and on your way, you pick up what you want. You pick up what you want. You get up there, you lay there. They see what you got. They da, 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 da. It's the c- fastest way to do concessions. I don't know why every sporting venue doesn't just do that for their concessions instead of having to wait in a long line to get to the counter, say what you want, have them ring it in, go get it, make it. You just pick it up as you go, take it up there. Depending on how long the line is, boom, you're in and out of there in a few minutes and you're right back to your spot watching golf with all the goodies in your hands. The concession experience at the Masters is my miscellaneous pick. Yeah, I mean, I feel like every every I wish every stadium and every sporting event would take their notes from the Masters. And I feel like a lot of them probably do, honestly, because it is such a well-run event. Um, but you're right. Like now, and also to be fair, the the prices are really cheap because they know they know they're going to get you in the pro shop. So they're they're going to get their you're, they're going to get your money. Don't worry about it. But at least they don't do it on the concessions. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good pick. Can I ask what's y'all's favorite, what's y'all's go-to sandwich? I like the, the fried chicken sandwich. Love it. Honestly, for me, I'm with the cold chicken. You can't yeah. go wrong. Mm-hmm. I like the barbecue. Mm. Mm. Uh, look, the breakfast sandwich is a, is probably the best one they got. You got to get there early. But the hot breakfast sandwich. What all? What all comes on that? It's a medley: cheese, eggs, bacon, a little spice, got a little heat to it okay. as well. Okay. The hot right in the, early in the morning. Yeah, it's a good. Might dabble on Wednesday. Y'all yeah. want to know something surprising? The egg salad is really good. Oh, I had oh, that, that's I had well a, known. I had a well, but I had a pimento cheese and an egg salad, and I like the egg salad better than the pimento cheese. That's hmm. fair. That's a fair. I think that's oh, a yeah. fair statement. Yeah. Yeah. The pimento cheese is a classic, but the egg salad is 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 right up there. <laughs> yeah, I might get fancy with one of those like early on in the day, but when I've been out there all day. My Fitbit told me I'm at like 18,000 steps and I just need sustenance. I'm getting a couple chickens and a couple blue sports drinks and I'm getting my nourishment. No. Okay. You get you're, you're getting a few domestics too. Do it for the Yeah, cup. but when I need hydration, I'll go with the sports drinks. But yes, I will have a, my stack of cups I'm walking around with as well. Yes. All right, Stuart, your final pick. My final pick, a miscellaneous, and I think I have to give a nod to the relationship between the Masters Tournament and CBS Sports. Mm. I think that's where I'm going with my miscellaneous thought there, CBS. 96 minutes of golf on every 100 minutes or whatever Dr. Ford (laughs) is saying on there. Yeah, um, and as somebody who watches every weekend on how much we complain about not getting to see golf shots on every P- on PGA Tour weekly now, um, the announcers we have basically have the same announcers. We have, every now and again we'll have to shuffle in some. Enjoying I, this year, I I have to give a nod to our beloved Uncle Vern on his last Masters this year. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. In your <laughs> life, have you ever seen anything like that? But, Two of our picks, we've already referenced Vern. That's how legendary he is. As well he should be. Timeless. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) (laughs) So that's that's, that's even even from the beginning when they started with CBS. And that was the first time that they painted the golf holes white so that you could see them stick out on CBS in the black and white. I did not know that. That's cool. uh, That was a CBS thing. the 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 score to par was a CBS thing with Augusta minus twelve, so that you could keep up with it easier than two seventy six is the winner. Yeah, there's, there's been a lot that's happened between Augusta, CBS that started everything. That's a that's a really cool pick, um, and I think to me what's impressive about that is as college football people, like we freak out when the SEC on CBS has a game, the link. And the the regularity of the commercial breaks is maddening. Like it is awful. It's a four hour game every time. It's terrible. And so you say it's the same broadcasting company though doing this other sporting event. And like Stuart said, like hardly any commercials. So what what that shows to me is kind of just the power of the masters. 
that they don't play CBS doesn't play by CBS rules. CBS plays by Masters rules. Like that's what's cool to me about that. CBS tells the SEC how those games are going to run. Augusta National tells CBS how that tournament's going to run. That's what I'm saying. You got that right. All right, Mr. Irrelevant, Kevin, what you got? Oh, man, I would not call my pick irrelevant. Um, and there might be a little bit of pandering going on here, but in the spirit of miscellaneous, what could be better than the gallery guards at the Masters? Oh, my right? God. Like, they are instrumental <laughs> in the tournament. Um, you even see it when there's no people there. Their work is still not done, as you can see, with Mr. Dollar Bill working hard in that newspaper clip. They they make the event go. I Yes, I know a few of the uh, loyal listeners happen to be some gallery guards as well. If that wins me some votes, then so be it. But <laughs> and a participant. Masters, not masters without those oh, yeah. uh, gentlemen, I will say, running the show. We're supposed to keep a low profile. Yeah, look, uh, that got you two votes. I mean, I hope that was worth it. I yeah, I I think it's it's very strong. There are some others, right? We can go into honorable mentions. Some others that I was. Let me just before we move on. Yep. I will say Stephen and I's dad has a knack of getting on the coverage at least once during the week. Mm -hmm. Two years ago, he was in the fairway on one. Victor Hoblin just snap yep. hook right in there. And this was before it was on TV because it was in the morning. But watching the coverage online, it's just for like five minutes while he figures out what shot to hit. It is just the caddy, Victor Hoblin, and my dad just right there on the screen, just standing there. And there seems to be something like that every year. So, I mean, you know, it's man, always fun to a legend. for that. I mean, he made national newspapers. He's on ESPN for that. Like, the man's lived a life. What can you say? And the gallery guards, people may not know, the gallery guards get to play the Augusta National a couple months, or I guess a month and a half after the tournament. So – the, the, the national knows how important these these gentlemen are um, and rewards them handsomely, even though they don't get any financial benefit. Uh, I think most people would take playing the course over any amount of money. Yes. Yeah. And, and to Kevin's point, I mean, literally the year there was no gallery who was still there. The gallery guards. I mean, they had nothing to guard. <laughs> they had to guard. They had to guard the timelessness traditions. That's right. The, the players needed to be guarding their wives from them. It sounds like <laughs> Especially if Tiger had any girlfriends running around, needed the gallery guards there to. Oops, I'm sorry. Low blow. That's unbecoming of the tournament. All right. So that concludes the draft. We'll get to honorable mentions in a second. But to recap the draft, Stephen, his player was Bobby Jones. His year was 2020. His tradition was that it's always at the same course every year. His shot was Jack's putt on 17 and 86, and his miscellaneous is the timelessness. Ben, tradition, the green jacket ceremony in Butler Cabin, shot Tiger's chip in on 16, year 2012, player Phil Mickelson, and miscellaneous concessions experience. Stuart, shot Larry Mize, year 2011, tradition, champion's dinner, Player, Arnold Palmer, miscellaneous, CBS, Kevin, player, Jack Nicholas, shot, Gene Sarazen, tradition, the par three tournament, year 2019, and miscellaneous, of course, the gallery guards. So now we'll open it on up to honorable mentions. Um, I had a few here. I mentioned a story I wanted to tell after one of Stuart's picks on 2011. I was going to save that for... For my miscellaneous, if I was going to take the manual scoreboards, uh, but Stephen, you know, along with the rest of my miscellaneous uh, list, just knocked that out during his little spiel there. But 2011, like I said, Rory McIlroy was shooting himself out of the thing after having a, a four shot lead going into the Sunday. So it's anybody's game at this point. We're dad and I are standing on the fairway at either 10 or 11. Don't remember which one it was, but there's a manual scoreboard across the way. And like Steven said earlier, earlier, you just hear this roar that, you know, it is powerful. It feels like, you know, you're at a college football game, basically the amount of this war. So we all know Tiger's about on number eight right now. So he either birdied that or eagled it. 
And when they flip that scoreboard up to show that Tiger just went from six under to eight under, the best way I can describe the gallery, they're on number 10 or 11, while like other players were trying to, you know, get ready to hit their shots. It was like a college basketball bench mob when one of their teammates just posterized someone and they're just going crazy on the bench, like holding each other back from like falling down and everything. It was just unreal. And going back to one of Steven's earlier points, this was 2011 tiger, not fully back in the good graces of everybody yet. But at that moment it was eye opening. like, Oh, like this is still a tiger town. This is, you know, people are pulling for him. It was just a great moment. My story is probably not doing it justice, but it's always stuck with me. Just seeing them flip that over, he went from six under on seven to eight under after eight. And the reaction, it was just unbelievable. So the uh, manual scoreboard's a good one. Got another one here. Um, only got to do this for a few seconds so we don't get copyrighted, but another miscellaneous. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think that'll be safe from us not getting a copyright strike on the YouTube, but everybody knows what that means. During the NFL playoffs, if C CBS has the Super Bowl coming back in from a commercial break, they're going to hit that. They're going to show the shot down Magnolia Lane, and it's going to stop everybody at the Super Bowl party in their tracks. Like, oh, Masters, Masters, Masters. Uh, yeah. Just, you know, other than that, for miscellaneous, look, no one picked Tiger as the player, but we probably talk about him more than anybody else on – uh, this show, so we didn't feel like the need to pick him. Uh, I also had 2005 as one of my years. Uh, 2017 is one of my years. Sergio over Justin Rose in the playoff. <laughs> and sort of sneaky great one. Um, Phil shot out of the pine straw 13 for shot. Bubba shot on 10 in the second playoff hole for shot. Ustazen's double eagle on two like we talked about. Uh, some sort of fun ones for tradition, skipping the ball in 16 on the practice rounds yeah. uh, is always a fun sight. Uh, the ceremonial Thursday morning tee shots with the legends. Uh, thought someone might pick that. But I had that in my, on my list. Yeah, yeah. The uh, caddy uniforms for that could go for tradition or miscellaneous, another great one. But anyway, I've rambled at this point. So uh, you guys, what else did y'all have on your list? How about the uh, the pro shop? I mean, Stephen kind of hinted at it, but the the apparel that's just not sold anywhere else, right? If it if you see it anywhere else, it's because somebody is reselling what they got from the Masters. I can't yep. think of any other event that is that exclusive. And then just the like factory like nature of it, where you have a bunch of high school kids basically making it a well oiled machine of funneling thousands of people through these these shops is is just a sight to behold. Yeah. Uh, a pro tip at the merchandise once you buy everything and they come out and they ship it to your house they'll even, yeah. ship, it, they'll even ship it across to your house so you don't even have to worry about it yeah that's a pro move getting the pro shop early and then check it you can either grab it on the way out or have them ship it to you so you're not lugging it around all day but you get in there first thing when you get there for sure yeah i mean it's, it's just a world-class first class experience all around like it never fails so is this is this our honorable mentions, or are we just kind of like saying stuff we didn't have on our list? Like what what are we doing right now? That's just stuff that you like had on your list could have been drafted that didn't get drafted. Okay, so this isn't honorable mentions because I got I got something. Well, this is, mentions, but I'll well, save that if we're getting to this that. Is, they, oh, they, okay. Yeah, go uh, ahead with it. All right. With so it. if y'all thought Bobby Jones was crazy, if you thought oh, timelessness was crazy. If you thought the Augusta National just being the tradition that I picked was crazy, wait till you hear this. And I had this on my miscellaneous list, but it, it didn't make it. But how about the master's vocabulary? Let me tell you something. Is there any other like sporting event out there that literally has like their own words for stuff? Like when you walk into Augusta National, you're not a fan. You're a patron. Mm -hmm. They're not sand traps. They're bunkers. Um, the, I heard somebody made an erroneous reference earlier when they called it the back nine. Well, technically, mm -hmm. they call it the first nine and the second nine. It's not the front and back nine. I mean, it's 
And, and, yeah. and people, yeah. play, people play along with these rules because they know if they don't, who was it? Was it Gary McCord, the golf announcer that's banned from doing, he can't call masters because he said the greens looked like they had bikini wax on them or something like that. Like Careful. Fair sure. Well, I'm just saying, but you may, I think, like, that's crazy, and, and, and they have their own words for everything. Oh, and um, they're not tickets or passes. They're, they're badges. Like, it's wild. But everybody loves it. Everybody plays along, and everybody respects it. Like, it's just – it's cool and, and unique. I don't know of any other place that, that has that. So that that's my honorable mention. I, I got an honorable mention. How about the town, the, whole, the town of Augusta around the whole thing? And how much the town of Augusta has – supported the tournament from the beginning even even as bobby jones was playing in and it was not the masters that it has become it was the town of augusta that supported them mm-hmm. they were sell, they were selling lots to build houses down the first hole that people were, were buying that, to raise money hmm. and that, that that i got that on my tradition the people just the town of augusta the people that are associated with the tournament Every gallery the, arts, gallery oh. arts, the <laughs> people who rent their houses, everything around. No, that's 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 a really good point. And I guess out of everything we've been saying that's wonderful about the Masters and wonderful about Augusta National, this might be the one thing that kind of irks me besides Randos winning the green jacket. But it's that I feel like the Masters is slightly becoming more corporate and, and they're kind of taking some of that magic away from like just your regular Augustans. Like it used to be where if somebody had a badge, they could go in for two hours, enjoy the tournament, come out, give it to somebody else. Somebody, a friend could go in, a family member could go in. You could like trade out the same badge, swipe it three or four times a day. We can't do that now, um, you know, cause they've, they've limited to like, what is it, two? You know, each, each badge gets two swipes a day. Um, and I, you know, I, I don't know, I feel like it's harder for locals to get the, the badges. Um, so there were some things like that that were super cool, but I, I feel like some of that we're, we're losing a little bit of it. But I don't know. Maybe that's just me. What do you all think? Oh, I, I think without a doubt. I don't think we have as much a say in it as uh, as maybe at one point we did. Yeah. I just want to say I don't know what y'all are talking about. I think everything they do is the right move. And, you know, the more and more they progress, the more and more it's becoming – uh, you know, a better place to be. And if there happens to be anybody there with any power who comes across this episode and wants to give a media pass to an up and coming local podcast, then, you know, that'd be a great thing. I think you guys are doing a bang up job. Just keep it up. I got no complaints about the job you guys are doing. Oh yeah. It's definitely the best, the best sporting event, like hands down. Oh, and last thing I want to say, I know you're probably ready to go, but going back to my point about the Augusta national and just like how cool the course is, that year that um, Matsuyama won, one of my favorite shots is the caddy. How his mm-hmm. caddy bowed to the course like when it was over. Like that was just super cool and just showed the respect. So I I, I forgot to mention that earlier and I wanted to throw that in there. But I, I love when I see that picture. That is so cool. It's just it never ceases to amaze me that there's a group of four guys who could do this exact same thing we're doing like any town, any city on earth. And this all, the whole thing is 15 minutes away from where we grew up. Yep. And like, we're, we're not this big city, you know, but where a bunch of cool stuff happens. It's just, it's crazy. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Then we rode, we would ride by Magnolia Lane every Sunday on the way to church. Oh, growing up, it was, Four times a week, to and from church twice a week. And you know what's crazy? It never fails. I, there's probably a million times I've read, rode down Washington Road and gone by Magnolia Lane. That's exactly right. When you're riding in the car, what do you do? Oh, there it is. And then you just keep going. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it just is what it is. So it's so cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It could be, you know, November. You're going to do that when you yep. pass by. It doesn't matter. Yeah. All right, boys. I thank you all for coming on. Good draft. We're right at about an hour 15 here. Uh, any any final words before we get out of here? Thanks for having on, me. Thanks. Thank, yeah. Thanks for having oh. us. Are we picking winners? Well, we got to. This is a per- entertainment. 
Stephen? All right, round of winners. Let's, I guess, go in the draft order. Stephen, who you got? Huh. Well, <laughs> let's see. Quick, quick picks. Or do y'all want to go uh, reverse order? To be fair. <laughs> yeah. How about to help me out? Let's go reverse order. All right, oh, Kevin. Hi. Okay. I'm a little off the board here. If you're if you're playing with uh, fake money, plus 3,500, Will Zalatoris. Been been very close. I got laughed at for this pick by some. It's off the board. It's not a, probably a top 10 pick, but I think there's good value there. He's played well in the past. He's shown that he's back healthy again. So give me Will for the winner. Will he see? Well, Stuart? if we're just playing with pretend, pretend money, four to one odds. Oh. The, the one player that has been that has looked mm. like any kind of a golfer, give me Scotty. Yeah, he's. I uh, I don't know how you so go, go. He's away on another from that. plane from anyone else on the planet right now. <laughs> he can be it's, average at putting. He's gonna yeah, if he's middle of the pack putting, he's going to win by five. He shots. doesn't even have to be middle of the pack. He yeah. just doesn't have to be dead last. <laughs> yeah, it's it's scary. Um, if we're going by odds, I'll take Victor Hovland. He's around 30 to one right now, which, you know, he can always just catch fire in a week and be the best player anybody's ever seen. If we're just going off the top of the board, Rory's going to win one eventually. I think might as well be this year. I don't know. He'd be the top of my list. If I could pick who is going to win. I think it's, I think he would be my pick like of who I want to win this year. After last year, everybody's sort of writing him off. Like, Oh, he just can't do it here. Forgetting two years ago, he came in second place. If Scotty Scheffler again wasn't just on a different existence yeah, but wasn't in, it a in the world, he wasn't second place. Like he wasn't, he wasn't a close. But again, place. he beat what he beat eighty two out of the eighty three golfers in the thing. See, yeah, I came on late. I think if I'm voting, if I vote with my heart, I want Rory one hundred percent. So I'm like, it would be awesome for him to win it. I mean, if. If Danny Willett gets to go to the Champions Dinner, then doggone it, Roy McElroy better be in that Champions Dinner. I, I'm just saying it is what it is. But I'm one of those people that Ben just said, I don't know. I don't have confidence in Rory. I feel like he blew it in 2011. I feel like that was his year, and, and, it, and it didn't happen. So I'm worried we might have a Greg Norman or, or somebody like that on our hands. People forget 2018 again. He was in the final pairing with Patrick Reed. Yeah, and I mean, golly, I think we probably all would have wanted McElroy over Reed, but, you know. It just it stinks, but I love Rory. I hope he wins for sure. But I'm going to go with a repeat champion. I mean, John Rom's amazing. Like I love John Rom. Like I Stephen has I always been a John Rom guy. It, y'all, you want? Do we have time for me to tell you why I'm? He's my guy. Yeah, you kind of look like okay. Him. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, let me tell you something. Yes, we look alike. He's very handsome. But there was a, a Masters a few years ago. He literally is in the fairway and he hits a ground ball that like rolls across the fairway and like gets behind a tree. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can perfectly relate to that shot. And then it gets even better. Then he hits the shot and it hits the tree and goes backwards behind him. He hit two terrible shots back to back in a real golf tournament as a pro. And I'm like, I could have done that exact same thing. Like, I love this guy. He's amazing. And last year during the practice round when I was there, John Rahm and whoever he was playing with walked up to the 12 T for their shot. And a couple of uh, uh, man proposed to a woman like right behind them as they walked up to the T and Rom and whoever he was playing with, they walked over to him and paused and did pictures with him and did all that because it was the, the proposal. And it was just cool like seeing that. So how he interacted with the fans then. And then of course he went on to win that year because that was last year. So I'm just a wrong guy. I like John Rom, so I'm, I'm perfectly fine if he wins, and, and he could. He could win again, so I'll go with him. Mm-hmm. Very good. Very well, good. there you have it. Uh, again, boys, I'm sure we'll get this uh, quartet on again on the show at some point, definitely before football season, to uh, give all our thoughts and predictions on that. But, uh, again, any last words? It's Masters Week, boys. Right. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. We made it. May the weather be good right. for us. That's right. That's always a big. Okay. Before we get out of here, everybody, remember you're watching this. Click that thumbs up. Comment below. Who do you think won this draft? Who won the draft? Rewind a few minutes to when I called out everybody's picks. Who won the draft? Let us know. Also, follow at EPOCFB on Twitter. Follow at Benjamin J Party on Instagram. Vote there as well. 
Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all.